Hi, this is Katie with CraftingWithKatie.com and today I'm going to be making a card using two different Cricut cartridges. Um, it's a baby card and on the inside I'm going to use the Everyday Pop-Up Cards cartridge and I'm going to be use, making um, a little pop-up of a baby carriage for the inside. Then for the outside I'm going to take from Wrap It Up these cute little baby blocks and I'm going to change them a little bit in the gypsy so that I can have three different ones with different letters. Okay, so to do all this, I'm gonna be using my Gypsy, so let's get started with a new document. So the first thing that I always do when I'm making a card is I find a rectangle that I can have on, my, um, on one of the layers, and that's just gonna give me an indication of how I should size things. So I make it the size of my card. So I know um, there's rectangles on a lot of cartridges, but I know there's one on Don Juan. So if you hit shift, you'll see it right here. So I'll just go ahead and add that to my mat. And I'm gonna put the real dial size on and take off the tool that links the width and the height. And I'm gonna make the width be four and a quarter inches. And I'm gonna make the height be five and a half inches. Okay, so that will be the size of my card. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a new layer because I'm not actually going to cut that one. And now I'm going to take off the real dial size and put the little linking tool back on. And let's start with the blocks. So that was on the Wrap It Up cartridge. So we'll scroll down to Wrap It Up. And the block is right here. So what I'm going to do first is just take the base of the block. I'm not going to take the layers and try to figure out what size I want it. So it's set at one inches. I'm going to try it to see how it looks at two. And that might be good. And I'm going to have three of them. So what I'm going to do is go to the advanced and I'm going to copy that twice. And that way I can see. So what I was thinking of doing is having like one here, maybe one here, and then putting one on top. So I think the two inches will be a good size. Okay, so now we're going to work with the layers. So now that I um, know the size, I don't need to see the rectangle, so I'm just going to hide it. We'll use it again later. Alright, so if you look here at the um, handbook for this, you'll see the brown, that layer I just pulled up, gives just a little bit of a shadow around the different parts of the block. So we're going to need that. For this one, this is the golden color, um, you can see there's a letter A there. And because I want to do an A, a B, and a C that are of the same font, I'm actually probably going to hide this and replace it with a font that I have on my Gypsy. So let's go now back in and I'm going to hit the shift key to get that next layer. There it is. And I'm just going to go back to basic and hit this to ungroup these two. Okay, now if I hold down this button and click on it, I can see it bigger. So like I said, I'm not going to want that A showing. So all you have to do is go to advanced, click this little tool in the corner here, and then if you press, you can either hit next on here or you can use your button to get around, but once the A starts to get highlighted, like here, I'm going to hit hide on all those little parts. So get rid of all of those. Oops, bring that one back. Oh, wait a sec. Go back up. I missed one. Oh, there it is. Okay, so now I have a plain block which is what I'm looking for. And you can see it in a light gray that the, the A is there, but because it's not blue, it's not going to cut. So what I want to do now is try to find a font that will look good. And I actually already looked at my fonts to see one that was similar. And I saw the one on a child's year I liked. So I'm going to go to a child's year. Here's the font. And I'll hit shift. And we're just going to take the A for now. So I want it to be about that same 
height, maybe a little bit different. So I actually played with it a little bit and I just, when I was playing with it, 1.14 was good. Now you'll notice, if you can see here, it's um, tilted on here because of the way the block is. So I'm going to do the same thing on mine. So to do that, you're going to go to Advanced and we're going to rotate it. Oops, the other way. We'll go about 10 degrees that way. And then this one will kind of stretch it out. So if, as you're looking at this, it's slightly angled. It would need to be stretched. So I'm going to change that. Well, I kind of like that. That looks pretty good. So that's my letter. Now, because this is all sized and angled the way I want it to be, I'm going to, while it's highlighted, go back to the, a child's ear, grab a B and grab a C. And that way I'm going to be able to cut all of those. So you can see each one. And we can, again, go back to basic and ungroup them and see how it'll look. look and that's great. Okay, I'm going to zoom out of this a little bit. So I have my three outside shapes. I have my three letters. I need three of these, so I'm going to go ahead, copy that twice, because that, since I'm making three blocks, I need three of everything. Okay, the next thing I need is this layer right here. So um, because I just grabbed the A, B, and C, we're going to actually get rid of the A in there. So let's go ahead and do that. So that was um, layer. Actually, we're in the wrong. We have to go back to wrap it up. Okay, so layer, and there it is. And I'm going to ungroup these. And the reason I keep having one block highlighted when I go to add the next thing is just to make keep it at the two inches. If I just were to click here and go to add something, say I wanted to add that, you see it comes in at one inch which is not what I didn't want. So that's highlighted. We'll get rid of that. Okay, so this is what I just added. I need to take out the A. So again, we'll go until the A is highlighted and hide it. And then I'll copy this twice. Oops, stay on the advanced tab for the two other blocks. Okay, so I have one more layer to add and that's I had hit shift and this is for the very top of the block. And I need three of those and I don't have to change them so I'll just take them from here. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is go through this in a little bit um, while I'm looking at my papers and then I'm going to arrange all of these on the mat so that they'll cut out the way I would like them to on the different papers. But now we're going to go on to the pop-up. So we are going to add another layer I don't think I'm very calibrated here. Come on. Okay, there it is. We're going to hide layer two. Let layer one show up again so we can see our rectangle. And we are now going to go to the everyday pop-up cartridge. There we go. And if we look at this one, we want the pop-up, and it's the first pop-up. The second one says new arrival. We just want the carriage. So I'm going to hit pop-up, and here's the carriage. So I'm just going to take it, and then we're going to play with the size. As you can see, it's very tiny right now. So I'm just going to increase the size. And... That's pretty good. I'm just going to change it to six. Make it easy. Okay. So, when I cut this, I'm going to want to make these in different colors because I want my wheels to be a different color than the carriage. So to do that, what I'm going to do is copy this whole cut and then I'm going to go here. Now, for for this cut, I just want to use the carriage. So I'm going to hide the wheels over here. So I'm going to hide all these parts. Oops, 
left one in. Okay, so that one will just cut the carriage. And then for this one, I want it just to cut the wheels. So I'm gonna actually go backwards here. Oops. There, so now the wheels will only cut. And this way I can move these around to whichever papers I want. Now, one of the funny things about this cartridge is that if you just cut the pop-up here, you don't get any layers. And if you cut this, the main stroller, there is an option with layers, and that's how you get that cute look. So, the tricky thing about um, this cartridge is that you can add the layers, but if you don't have a Gypsy or the Cricut Craft Room, it's going to be really hard to get them the correct size, because this is what you have to do. Go ahead and add the layer. So I'm going to go to layer one, and here's those parts of the carriage, okay? Then you have to bring them on top of your main image, and then you're just going to have to play with it, increasing the size until the layer matches up. If you remember, we cut that other one at six inches, the main carriage, but if I make, I mean, you can see I'm already up to 3.67 inches. If I went to six inches, it'd be way too big. It's not going to fit. So I'm going to make this a little bigger. Let's see. So it matches up maybe one more. So that looks pretty good. You can see how it's, it's all lining up there. And then when you bring, you'll cut this bottom layer here will line up at the bottom. So that's how I'm going to cut it and I can make that a different color and it just adds a little than just having the plain carriage in there. I like to have the different colors. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out all of the pieces and then we'll put this card together. Okay I've got my pieces cut out and I'm just making my card base. So this is some Paper Tray Ink Aquamist cardstock and it's cut at four and a quarter by eleven inches and I'm just scoring it at five and a half. I've got that down and before I glue my pieces on top of um, the little carriage I need to score it so what you want to do is this um, you'll see two little lines right here and those are actually for the wheels to go in so you don't score that you're going to want to score right here at the edge and then at the base of the carriage And then this part's going to fold down, well actually right here too. And then this part here. So this is going to start here and it's going to end right before the handle. It's a little tricky. Okay, so I'll go ahead and fold all of those pieces. And then I'll also go ahead and score for the wheels. So for here, you want to score right where it comes in a little bit in both parts. And then again at the base of the wheels. piece is a little more delicate so you have to be careful. Okay, so now I need to glue on these little pieces here. So I'm just going to use a little bit of my Scotch Quick Dry. Put that on here. And then we'll do some with this little piece for the bottom. You don't need a lot of this glue, so you can just kind of dab it on. I like this adhesive because it really sticks. Okay. 
Alright, so now we're ready for the fun part. So the first thing you're going to want to do is attach the wheels. So you're just going to take these two little arrows and push them into the little slots here. Okay, so just want to get those all the way through. Okay, now, then you want to just kind of figure out where you want to place it. Basically, these longer parts here are going to glue to the base of the card, and everything else is going to go up to the top. So I'm going to begin by getting these onto the base of the card. So I'm just seeing here how it'll best lay out so that nothing's sticking out from the carriage. So I think if I do it right about here, it'll be good. So again, I'm just going to use my Scotch Quick Dry, and I'm going to put some on this part, and a little bit on the base. Do the same thing for the other wheel. It's a little tricky, the angle I'm at. Let's see if I turn it to the side. We can probably all see better. Okay, so I've got that one. Let's go ahead and get that on there. Okay, the next step is to get some adhesive on these other sections, and then we're going to pull this down and adhere it. So that's going to be this little flap right here. So I'm just going to get some on there. And on this piece right here. And then if you get those nice and flat and you close your card and just hold it for a moment, you'll it'll end up being exactly where it needs to be. Okay, so now if you open it up, you've got your little pop-up. It's not adorable. So now we're gonna go and work on the front of the card. So these are the blocks that I cut out, and I went ahead and cut um, a rustic white piece of cardstock at three and three quarters by five inches, and a brown one at four inches by five and a quarter. And I'm gonna do a couple of things before I adhere those down. First, I'm going to use a sentiment from my Creative Times All-Star Baby stamp set. And the one I wanted to put on the front is, a baby is a special gift that will bring nothing but joy into your life. So I'm going to just move these aside. And now I've got um, my stamp mounted here. And this is some paper tray ink, dark chocolate ink. So let's get that inked up. I'm just going to center that near the top. I think it might be a little bit crooked. So when that happens to me, I just flip it over, try again. Stamping on camera is probably the hardest thing. So I've got a camera in between me and what I'm working on. Let's try again. Let me just bring it down a little bit more this time. There, I like that side better. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is actually I'm going to run this through my cuddle bug with a wood grain impression plate just to um, give a little bit of texture. I went ahead and ran that through. That was the paper tray ink wood grain impression plate that I used. I love that texture it gave to it. So now I'm going to just start assembling my card. So I'm going to begin by just using my ATG to get some adhesive to adhere this brown layer. Okay, now putting these blocks on might be a little bit tricky. So I need them kind of overlapping a little bit to 
put the A one on top. I think I'll move them up a little. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the C block and this one I'm going to just adhere directly onto it. But these blocks are so thick with all the layers. I use paper chain cardstock which is pretty thick that I'm going to have to use some pop dots to get the other ones on so that they're not all bent when they're layered one on top of the other. Okay, so there's the C. So for the B one, um, I'll probably put it like right here. So you can see part of it is going to have glue, but this side is where I'm going to need some adhesive squares. So I'm just using these 3D foam squares. And then the part that's actually going to be touching, I'll use my Scotch Quick Dry. Okay, so I'm going to put this one right here. Actually, the part where I put the glue doesn't even touch. Maybe a little bit. It's kind of tricky. It's in between, but I think it'll stay together pretty well. Now for this one, you can see it's really high. I'm going to put double across the top. I've never done this before, so we'll see if it works. So I'm just going to take the adhesive off these and just add another layer. It would probably be better if I had something a little bit thinner, but I don't. So that's going to be at the top. Now in that corner, Let's see. No, and that corner would just be adhesive, but I need something down in this corner. So I'm going to put a little bit of adhesive over here. Now I'm not even sure if it's going to hit in the right spot. Let's see. So this has a lot of dimension. that worked. Very cute. So I think I'm going to add another sentiment in here. So when you open it up and you see the carriage, I'm going to put one there. So let's see what else we have here. I think I'll do congrats on your new little miracle. So I'm just going to take this other stamp off. Find there it is. And for these longer stamps, I like to just lay them down and then pick them up with the block. Because otherwise, if you try to put it directly on that, sometimes it twists a little bit. Which in this case wouldn't really matter because it's a kind of a bent look of a sentiment anyway. But if you're trying to get something really straight, that's a good tip. Okay. So I'm going to put that right there. There we go. So we've got this cute front and then you open it up and you've got another sentiment in the little pop-up carriage. Thanks for watching.